Fred Fury Radio, this is Chiara Nicoletti. I'm in company of Swanky and Bob Wells, among the protagonists of Nomadland by Chloe Zhao. First of all, uh, I have to say that I read that at first you didn't want to be part of the film, even though a lot of your stories are included in Jessica Bruder's book, uh, from which the film is based on. So why did you finally decide to be a part of it it's a, in such an essential role, I would say? Uh, I didn't understand what the movie was about. I mean, I knew it was based on Jess's book, but I didn't really comprehend the whole thing. I had a lot on my mind. I was trying to arrange, uh, my shoulder was bad. I couldn't lift my arm that high. I, 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 I couldn't even get it up there. And I load my kayak on top of my van, so I couldn't load my kayak anymore. And that was making me a little crazy because I can't give up kayaking. Um, and Chloe is very tenacious. She, she, she knew what she wanted. She and Francis, they already had their mind made up that you know they needed me in the movie, but I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know, I didn't understand what the movie was about. I was preoccupied with my, the pain in my shoulder and the necessity to get, get it fixed. And I was trying to make arrangements to do all that. And I explained to Chloe that my shoulder was my priority. I had to fix it. And I didn't know if I was going to be in a sling, you know, by the time they were ready to film or what, because I didn't have a surgery date yet. I didn't have a surgeon. I didn't know where I would go to recover or where I would park my rig or anything, you know, so I, I had a lot to figure out. And she just said, wherever, whatever it is, we'll work with it. We'll, we'll work around you. And so that's why I'm in a sling in the movie. I was still recovering from surgery. The film has won a lot and is going straight to the Oscars. And during this film journey, did you feel that the perception of people through your way of life has changed? I mean, do you think that people have become more fascinated, respectful, and maybe less critical towards your choices in life if you experience criticism, of course? Uh, I don't know. A lot of people have a preconceived notion that we're dirty, that we live in a filthy environment, that we're bums or drunks or drug users or something. I don't do any of that. And my house is clean. No critters live in here but me. You know, there's nothing crawling around in here. There's no garbage, there's no filth. I, I don't use drugs, I don't smoke. And so many of the people that I know out here, that's, that's true, they're educated people, they're refined. Um, they're just choosing to live outdoors full time. And so many people have the preconceived notion that that's not true, that we're the people that are actually sleeping on the sidewalks. We don't take showers and, and we have some kind of social dysfunction or medical problem or something. And it's, it's just not really true. So I think the movie kind of shows who the average people are that are out here, who the typical people are. Um, but it, it doesn't show a lot of the joy that we get out of this lifestyle of, about being outside and being in nature all the time. And um, so I, I hope it doesn't um, sensationalize or encourage more people to come out here because it took me maybe 10 years to prepare to come out here. It's not, you can't just jump in your van and go, you know, you need power, you need sanitation. Uh, you, you got a lot to figure out and learn. And some people just think they can get in the van and go and then they end up in trouble um, by doing so and they're not prepared and, and they don't succeed at it. So I, I hope that they don't flee and, <laughs> and come out here to enjoy nature because it may not work. The film is very touching, I have to say, and a lot of uh, a very emotional moments are uh, related to you and your character in the film. So I was acting a part while being also yourself, in a way. The only part in the movie where I was acting where I was pretending to be helpless, sick, and dying. I'm not <laughs> helpless, sick, or dying, or dead. Um, so that part was hard to do not only because it's not true, but because my ex-husband and the father of my children had died of brain cancer. And 
I, mm -hmm. I was going to be hard to say that I had that too, you know, it, it was extremely hard and emotional. I love the film and I love you, Swanky. So thank you so much for, for this interview and for thank the you. film. Thank you. So uh, I have to say that uh, I read um, Chloe Zhao, director's notes, and she says, she says at one point that it's not possible to fully describe the American road to another person. Uh, you have to discover it by yourself. So how would you describe it? And what does this road mean to you? I would say it's healing. Um, I think above everything else, the American road is healing. It's finding a reconnection with nature because nature is the main part of, of the American road. Uh, and it's also a reconnection with yourself. It's a time to be alone in your own head with your own thoughts, in your own heart, with your own feelings. So you can reconnect to nature and to, uh, to your own self. Um, and it's a time to reconnect with other people uh that the barriers the barriers fall down on the american road you become a part of instead of an observer of or an enemy of uh there is a, a reconnection that can only be experienced and not really described i loved it and here's something that i asked swanky as well since the film has won a lot and it's going straight to the Oscars, do you uh, do you feel and did you feel that during this film journey that the perception of people through your way of life has changed? I mean, do you think that people have become more fascinated, respectful, on or less critical towards your choices in life if you experience criticism, of course? Uh, yeah, we, I definitely experience criticism. There are people who don't understand it uh, and have, you know, and, and have questions about it and, and honest questions. Uh, but I think, I hope more people are, offer more respect for it, can under, uh, the, the biggest misconception is that we're just all homeless bums and we have no choice. We have to absolutely, we're homeless bums living on the road because there's no choice. But at like three times in the movie, Fern, the main character, turns down the chance to, to go home and live in a house because this is the, her chosen way of life. Uh, she's forced into it economically, but it remains her chosen way of life, even with the way out. And so I hope that shows people that the quality of your life can actually improve and the quality of your life doesn't depend on your things on homes, on power, prestige, on uh, money. The quality of your life depends on your connection and that you can have a deeper connection outside of things than you can inside of things. I think that, I hope that's the thing people take away with. Uh, what did you learn about you and your choices by watching yourself for the film? Well, uh, I'm, I'm a, a compulsive thinker, and uh, so I think a lot all the time. And so I don't know that I learned anything from, uh, in fact, I, I uh, don't actually enjoy watching myself. I, uh, huh. I've barely seen it uh, just because I had to see it. So I don't actually watch it. Uh, now, you told me uh, before that it's, also about healing, you know, the process of choosing this life. But I was reading an interview you gave that you said that uh, the van life people is not, that they're not all, all uh, chasing healing from grief. So how can you then describe the journey to choosing this lifestyle? Well, uh especially with uh, a, a lot of the younger people now many many younger people are coming into this the mm -hmm. so uh van life uh nomadic living is a big tent and in the tent there are a lot of subgroups inside the big tent and i'm older of course and i my audience is predominantly older so for them there's a lot of the healing and that's where the healing will mainly take place 
But for the younger people, the millennials, a lot of young people go to YouTube and look up uh, van life and you'll see dozens or hundreds of young people, couples living in vans. They're not looking for healing. They're looking for, they're looking for an authentic life. And I think they see that a, the traditional American dream, I can only speak for America really. Um, in America, it's not really an authentic life. It's not a life of connection. Uh, right. And so that's what they're looking for. There's a bit of rejection for, I think for the young people, there is a rejection of the consumerism. Things are all that's important. Money is all that important. Your job, your power, make, people, make sure people know who you are. That's not really important. That's not what makes life rich and full. So it's a rejection of that for a higher quality, authentic life. How was your journey into the cinema world? Uh, <laughs> it was it was very good. It was actually very short. I was on. We only had the set up where the, where the location where we gathered into the shooting. Uh, I think it was no more than four days, and so um, it was very good. We recreated a gathering I host called the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, the RTR, and so it was like you know, they did an excellent job. Uh, it felt just like a gathering of nomads. And so it was like having a gathering and meeting your old friends again. It was very pleasant. Thank you so much, Bob. It was a pleasure meeting you, even if only virtually. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we've been talking to Bob Welt and Swanky for Nomadland by Chloe Zhao and this is Chiara Nicoletti for Fred, the Festival Insider.